going on, man? We just had a Christmas party. Wow. Hey, what did you get? I got candy cane. <laughs> what did you get? And I drank hot chocolate. Can you read us the story of Christmas? Uh, all right. Twas the night before Christmas. Here we go now. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his courses they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Wait, Mr. Matthew, that's not the right story. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's the one about Santa. Oh. Why don't you pick that book? Uh, oh, this one? A Christmas Carol? All right, here we go now. The story begins on Christmas Eve in the cold streets of London. Down one particularly dreary road, we come to the office of Scrooge and Marley, where Ebenezer Scrooge sits at his desk, going over his accounts and counting his money. Perhaps his favorite pastime. Opposite him sits his clerk, Barb Cratchit, who is struggling to stop herself from shivering. Forgive me for asking again, sir, but why don't you just buy some coal for the furnace so we don't have to freeze? And waste good money burning coal? Why don't I just throw my money straight into the furnace? Man up and put on another layer. Ebenezer Scrooge was not one to part with his money, nor did he share in the Christmas spirit. Ever since his business partner Marley had passed away seven years ago, you'd be hard-pressed to call anyone his friend. Shortly after, they are visited by Scrooge's nephew, Fred, who invites him to his annual Christmas party. And as is custom, his uncle tells him he's not interested. No, just like I told you last time, Christmas parties are a waste of money. As Fred continues trying to persuade his uncle, in walk two women collecting donations for charity. Good evening, gentlemen. Anyone spare a penny for the poor and homeless? No, not one. Now, if you don't mind, we are very busy. I can see that, sir. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Bah, humbug, Scrooge replied with his usual bitterness and disdain. No, 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 Mr. Rossi. That's not the right story. What is wrong? It's a great ghost story with Ebenezer and Jacob. No, Mr. Massey, it's not about the Scrooge. Oh. It's about you-know-who. Ah, you-know-who. We're going to turn these frowns upside down. I get it. There's one more here. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. This is it. Here we go now. Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be, perhaps, that his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. Whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the Who's. Staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown, at the warm lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a snare. 
Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find a way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew all the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise. Oh, the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated. The noise, 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 noise. Then the Who's, young and old, would sit down to a feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast on Who pudding and rare Who roast beef, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. Okay. Open the Luke 2. As we all celebrate this Christmas, let's remember the reason why we celebrate. God's unconditional love for all of us came down to be with us in the form of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the reason for the Christmas season. From all of us here at UCA, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a joyful New Year.